we feel like it is too much. What do we do when we feel like we are alone? You know, those moments, I came to realize that there is a difference from a person who knows the word. If you know the word, the head knowledge, If you, there's a difference between a Christian who knows the word, he knows the scriptures, that Christian knows that uh, uh, he or she is in Christ, he knows that God loves him. He knows he has that knowledge with him or her. But there is an, uh, and, and the difference uh, between that Christian and another, another Christian who knows uh, all that, that Christian who knows God loves him, that Christian that understands the word and put it into work or put it, allow it to work in his own or her life when situations come around when those are uh, uh, that word that you have that comes to be tested that's where the difference come i came to realize they are two different things you can have the word but you we will see that maturity we'll see uh, how you have carried that word how you have understood it how you have allowed it in your life when that word is tested the bible says that the word is a seed a seed that's supposed to bear fruit if that word uh, says that you are the righteousness of God, when the enemy comes to test or to, to try to deceive you in that line, will you allow uh, uh, the word now, to, when the word comes to be tested, will it pass uh, that test in you, in your life? That's why I have uh, titled that teaching as drawing our strength from God. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, 24 verse 10 it says uh, uh if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small there's another version that says if you fall to pieces in a crisis there wasn't much to you in the first place i love another version that says if you fall under pressure your strength is too small okay the Bible says if you fall or if you faint or if you fall into pieces, if you fall under pressure, it means that your strength is small. What does that mean? That uh, your strength in the first place, it was not drawn from the word of God. It was not drawn from the spirit. It was not drawn from God. It means from the beginning, your strength, the source of your strength, was maybe your marriage, your relationship, it was money, you know, your focus was uh, uh, in another place. That's why when crisis came, when, when pressure came, you fell. You fell into pieces, you fainted. Why? Because I believe the strength of God cannot make you faint. You cannot say that God is your strength or you held on to the strength of the word. You held on or you had faith with that word yet you fell, okay? So it means that in the first place, the strength is small because your focus or your strength was not drawn from the right source. It is very important uh, uh, to have now a clear understanding of what or who is the source of your strength as a believer. That's why it's very important to have that clarity of mind. Even as you are meditating on the goodness of God, the masses of God upon your life, it is very important that you have the clarity that, yes, I have this money, my bank account is like this, yes, my spouses is very good, yes, I have the children of my dream, I have the job of my dream, but where does my strength come from? from where does my hope where is my strength where is my hope where is my my trust because if, 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 if your strength or if your trust and your focus is not a hundred percent in god in his uh, word in, his, in the spirit when those things are normal or when a small wind come your way you will fall okay so when you find yourself uh, uh, breaking into pieces because true uh, challenges are there setbacks are there you know people are there to make you feel bad 
but your response or the point as to where you go the down the point where you go down where if you are discouraged or if you are hurt it will be determined by where your heart was in the first place okay so our souls as christian is supposed to be god or it is god the moment you get born again the moment you receive the spirit of christ the moment you say uh, uh, you are uh, uh, in the kingdom of god it means that you are born of the word it means you 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 are a new creation meaning that you are a creation that never existed that's why we are called the new creation so meaning we are supposed to live by the word our life 100% it is supposed to be held together by the strength of god the strength of god by this i mean the word of god everything that is in god the spirit of god you know the faith in god being encouraged being comforted it is all in god the bible says that uh, in the book of psalms 73 verse 26 and 28 it says my flesh and my heart may fail but god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever in verse 28 it says but it's good for me to draw near to god i have put my trust in the lord that i may declare all your works you see the bible says that our flesh and our heart may fail but god is our strength that means that we when you are walking in the flesh when you are outside the strength of god when your your hope or the source of your strength is not god it is the uh, the, the things that you have or the things that you think that you are enjoying it will fail but sometimes it may fail the bible says when you draw near to god uh, you will declare the you will declare uh, uh, the works the good works of god in your life you will be able to enjoy the strength of god it doesn't matter what will happen at that point of your life it doesn't matter even if you put up a business and and it uh, at some point it lets you down or you uh, at some moment you have some losses you know you are supposed you you are able to stand strong you are able to align yourself and to remind yourself that you are in god and that is not where your 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 joy is but you are able also to concentrate and to be able to to handle that situation in the wisdom of god the good thing about trusting god making him your your rock making him your sure foundation making uh, him your refuge making him your strength is that at that moment of crisis at that moment of 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 of, of challenges you will be able to have a clear solution the wisdom of god will guide you the spirit of god the clarity of the voice of the spirit is so clear to you because you're not disturbed by those winds you're not disturbed by those challenges okay so we put our trust in god my tonight te- teaching is about exhortation and encouragement and i know we shall be encouraged in the mighty name of jesus so we put our trust in god uh we don't put our trust in money like i've said we don't put it in marriages or in the government you know there are times that we put our 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 hopes even when the elections are happening we are like uh yes when we elect this person all things will fall together you know everything will fall into place and when we elect those people when they are there in government they fail us you know so we don't put our trust in government we don't put our trust in the things that we have they are good you see even the bible says even the non believers they have those things and they desire them but for us believers those things do not uh, uh, do not uh, cloud our, our 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 clarity in the spirit they do not uh, uh, blind us or make us think that we are here i'm here i'm having a good family because my husband is good you know i am having everything together because i'm making a lot of money no we have solutions and we out when we draw our strength only from god not from money you know we are thankful when we have all that we are thankful but we don't put our our trust in them our strength is not in them our stability is not in them and that's why i remember apostle was teaching us about a wretched life 
when you have a, a rated life it means you're trust you're trusting in your own strength you're trusting in the things that you have uh, living a rated life which is living a life outside the spirit or outside the word of god but we have this confidence and this encouragement that even if sometimes we find ourselves trusting those things our mind uh, 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 um, uh, when uh, when we 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 submit to the spirit when we allow the spirit to guide that's why we have the spirit that the moment maybe we are falling at, as we are sliding into the flesh we are sliding into believing and having trust in those things you know the spirit tap us the spirit prompt us the spirit tells us and he's the one that tells us no this is the way to go this is not the way to go he's the one that uh, uh remind us that that's not where our focus that's not where our heart is that's not where our mind should be and we fall back to the spirit and we reign in the spirit okay so as long as you are in this world one thing for sure is that challenges will come temptations will come you know test of life they will come as long as you are in this life okay but as believers we are not like the people of the world we are not those people without help we are not like we have no help or we have no we have no hope and god tells us uh, uh, in the book of isaiah 41:10 that fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you and i will uphold you with my righteous right hand amen i want to repeat that be not uh, uh, fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you i will uphold you with my uh, uh with my righteous right hand and he continues to tell us even in the book of hebrews that i will never leave you nor forsake you so we may have boldness to say the lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me so god tells us that he is there to strengthen us he is there to encourage us he is there to uphold us with his righteous right hand but not what he says he says fear not fear not do you know why the moment fear creeps in the moment you give yourself to fear or those challenges come and you start fearing you start panicking and being anxious because those things has come you weaken your faith faith and fear do not work together and because god knows that because now we have the bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings you know we have we have everything we have that's why he tells us to acknowledge every good thing that he has he we, uh, we have in christ jesus you know god has given us everything if it is joy it is within us if it is peace we already have it if it is love we already have it in the spirit you know if it is those good good things you know that empowerment to create well those empowerment to be able to handle certain situations we already have that we are people that have already overcome even the world you know but god tells us do not be afraid why because that's what now the enemy has to make us afraid you know to make us doubt the word of god to make us doubt you know you were there maybe you have done some things you know uh, uh you have drifted away just for small you know or you have become angry yani you have done something that is not in line with your identity and you start fearing fear open a door for the enemy to torment you it opens a door for the enemy to make you doubt even your identity you're like I I think I am not even uh, the righteousness of God. I think God has forgotten about me. I think I need to do something for God to remember me, you know? And even the devil brings to you some scriptures to back up your fear and your anxiety, you know? That's why the uh, uh, um, God tells us, fear not for I am with you. Okay? Fear not for I am with you. He says he will never leave you. nor forsake you so that we may have that boldness uh, uh uh to know that he is the one who was our present help in time of need okay so god encourages not to fear and to trust in him because he knows the moment we fear we weaken our our faith 
okay when we don't trust him that day of evil that when it comes that day of 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 test when it comes that day that you feel like you are alone you know you are like overwhelmed even when 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 things seems um so much to you in your hand you know so without enough strength without enough believing or holding on to what god says holding on to that you can do it holding on to that you, you you have strength and you can do all things through god who strengthens you because when you have the word and when you trust it so much it will not only be knowledge to you even those challenges will come and you are like yes it is time for me to exercise it is time for me for this word to be proven in my life it is time for god to confirm his word through this situation so god tells us do not fear so number one way that you sh- you withdraw our strength from god is to not be afraid do not allow yourself to be fearful during that moment when situation are so so overwhelming do not allow fear creeps in the moment it creeps in bus the enemy has a door for you has a door to come and torment you okay so we walk in boldness of what god says about you do not doubt his word do not be distracted from his word why because fear will weaken you fear will make you doubt the word in you it will blind you even you will not be able to understand that word or that voice you know because the mo- there are moments that are uh, we are so overwhelmed maybe you're not even able to read the word the only word that you, will help it is the one that is in the inside of you are uh, this it is you and the word and the spirit with you so when you are fearful you will not even you'll be blinded you'll not even be able to, to to hear the spirit encouraging you reminding you of that word so you must calm down you must even not allow fear uh, to overcome you at that moment because you will give uh, the enemy the door to bring you down or to make you go back on your word you know when you when maybe god has given you a dream god has given you a certain purpose and i know every purpose every grace upon our lives will always be have those attacks of the enemy to make us doubt ourselves to make us doubt even that purpose we are like i think it was not this one you know you're like maybe even your your married yes and you are so sure about ma- that marriage you know a certain setback comes in that marriage and you're like i think this was not the man i think this was, was not the woman you know and you are there the devil says but this one she has already started doubting he has already started doubting and he brings in so many misunderstanding and because you have already shut uh, out the spirit and the word that is the inside of you now the enemy now start bringing you bring you down small small so and eventually the family is broken your children are scattered you know and your marriage is gone why because from the beginning you started doubting that purpose you had that purpose god placed in you your calling and everything there is nothing good that has no challenges you know the enemy always comes uh, to come and try to bring us down because that purpose always have a greater 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 um, uh, um, a greater purpose or a greater result you know every purpose has so peop- many people there the result are there are many people that will benefit in that purpose and of course the purpose of god you know from the beginning his desire is that many people may come and know him you know and so through his goodness he draw people to himself so in your that purpose do not allow the enemy come and and make you doubt okay because when you doubt when you you, you give fear that is an open door for the enemy to bring you down okay so the bible says in the book of joshua 1:9 have i not commanded you be strong and good courage okay again do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go okay the bible again says do not be afraid or do not be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go hallelujah and this one is joshua and it is in the old testament okay but now we are in a beautiful and more 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 better covenant where even even god does not say at i will be with you wherever you go no he is 
in us wherever we are he is in us the word of god is in us the spirit dwells in us okay we are there is a verse that says that we are in christ jesus in god that me and jesus we are in god so he is with us uh, in us wherever we go okay he is not even you see in the old testament he says wherever you go i am with you I am with you for us in a better covenant he says that I am in you so we should not be afraid do not be afraid so the first weapon or number one weapon that the devil uses is fear the word of god cannot work in an environment of fear it cannot because that means you have already closed your eyes to the reality of the word of god it means you have already shut down the instructions and the leading the promptings of the holy spirit so being fearful you have given the devil a fertile ground for him to reign okay so say no to fear it doesn't matter what happens there are those moments you are like i think this one no i can't you know the moment you utter those words you allow fear now to creep in and to have a home in you so do not allow it okay christ or jesus and god the holy spirit the word it is in us it is in us the spirit is in us so we are not supposed to be afraid okay by anything or anyone because we are in christ we are in god and he's with us in us wherever we go Okay also the bible says in the book of uh, 2 Timothy 1 17 I have not given you a spirit of fear again but of power and of love and of sound mind okay of sound mind but not the spirit of fear 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 is a spirit it is not a, we ha- we have not the spirit of fear but of power love and of sound mind so sound mind gives us an opportunity to reign because it means we have allowed the word to show us the direction to give us solutions to comfort us to encourage us in everything that uh, in everything that we might be going through okay so the spirit of god is of sound mind and great faith Okay so it is not of fear because I've, 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 like I have said fear weakens our faith okay so don't allow the enemy actually fear is something that is so dangerous let me show you something the bible says uh, in the book of uh, i think book of um, John 10:10 10, John 10:10 10, 10 says um the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy i have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly have you seen that the enemy comes to steal to kill and to destroy that means when you encounter any crisis along your life along your calling your purpose in your marriage wherever and you 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 have a note that that is the enemy coming in that tells you that you have something that can be stolen you have something that the devil want to steal to kill or to destroy okay so it is time for you to stand guard in the word of god in what the word speaks and what the word says not allowing the enemy to come and kill or to destroy you why let me show you something there is a story in the book of uh, in the gospels um Matthew or Mark uh let me check it Mark 4:35 Matthew Mark let me read from Mark 4:35 It says it is a story but I'll read it let me we'll go small small the bible says on the same day when evening had come he said to them actually it is Jesus himself that told them he is the one that came with the idea let us cross over to the other side hi now when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as he was and and other little boats were also with him and a great white wind storm arose and the waves beat in the boat so that it was already a uh, feeling but he was in a stand asleep on a pillow now jesus and they awoke him and said to him teacher Do you not care that we are perishing? 
Then he arose and rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? You see, fear and faith do not work together. And he said, How is it that you have no faith? Because they were fearful, of, of course, there was no faith. And that's what he told them. And that's what happens uh, uh, to most of us. Like I've said, in the journey of your purpose, in the life where you are, whether it is in, 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 in workplaces, in any area of your life, you know, you are sure that it is God that told you. It was even the idea of God and he told you, this is your calling, this is the way to go. This is, and he aligned you and he told you he has already prepared everything for you to, 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 to accomplish your purpose or to have that fulfillment, you know. And in every purpose or in every instruction of God or in our life, there is always a greater picture. There is always, because even I always say, even the moment that we are praying, when you're joining us here in, in prayer line and we are speaking about nations, we are praying about nations, we are praying about our families, our health, you know, our purposes, our destinies, you know, we don't only pray for ourselves, you know. At that moment, we may think it is about ourselves, but we talk about generations and generation and generation. It is a seed that you are planting for generations, that even that time, even your children or people that will come after us will be like it was because of uh, 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 Rachel, it was because of Lily, it was because of Jacob, you know, because you understood the instructions of God and the purpose of God in your life. Okay, you you were not distracted. The storms came, you know, and you are sure it was the idea of God. He's the one who said, let us cross over to the other side. Okay, but along the way, the, the winds came, you know, the, the betrayal came, you know, the luck came. You know, there were so much that came there, you know but you were not shaken because you were sure it was God that spoke. And you know, at the end of that crossing, you know, the other side of that uh, crossing, there will be a greater purpose. There will be a greater result because you endured and you held on to faith and not to fear, okay? But you see these ones, they said, they, they wavered and they called Jesus and they said, you do not care about us, you know? But God and uh, Jesus was so was so good. He's a very good shepherd, you know. He's a very good shepherd. He said uh, he first even he did not condemn them. He did not even start complaining to them. To them, he just said uh, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, "Be still." Okay, and they ceased, and everything was calm. But he turned to them and said, "Why are you so fearful?" The danger is in fear. The moment you fear, everything is gone. Because why? Because faith and fear uh, uh, do not work together. And the moment you fear the enemy, now will be able to cut short your purpose because you have allowed him to say so. Okay, in verse 41 it says, uh, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who this be that even the wind and the sea obey him now the most beautiful thing about this story is that you know uh, why did the enemy want to 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 to, uh, to attack because it was possible for them maybe they had not gone too far and it was possible for them to 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 suggest that they go back until the wind the wind is calm you know they it there was a possibility for them to say let's just go back and decide for another better day you know there was that time, but they, after Jesus uh, calmed the, the, uh, the sea, you know, and he said, be still, and everything was back to normal, they continued with their journey. And I was like, why did the enemy, why did the enemy uh, bring those, those uh, uh, challenges or the, the storm? Because there was a greater thing that was going to happen at the other side. In the next chapter, it says, then they came to the other side after all the challenges not giving up you know not giving up and throwing up the towel and saying uh -uh, this marriage is too much let me give it up this business it's not even two months and you're just disappointed along and you're like mm -mm, let me close it you know you're calling you're like i the challenges are too much 
and you want to throw up the towel, no. It is after you have endured everything, holding on to faith and to the word that God spoke and says, let's go to the other side, okay? And, and the Bible says, they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gadrins. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately they met him of, of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Immediately, the moment they stepped out of that boat, they found that man there. That was their pub. That's why they came into the other side. And that because that man was a man who was being tormented by many spirit and clean spirit, the enemy didn't want them to come and bring the solution to him. Why? Let me show you. In the uh, the Bible says immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces neither could anyone tame him and always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying out and cutting with stones you know that was a man who had a very very wretched life you know a man who was being tormented by the enemy and imagine the enemy didn't want Jesus and the disciples to come and give this man freedom, give this man the gospel that saves, the gospel that sets free. That's what the enemy, the enemy didn't want. That's why he brought all those challenges before they, they crossed. And says, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. He cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you don't torment me. For he had said, come out of uh, out of the man and clean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he will not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine feeding near the mountain. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine uh, that we may enter them. And uh, at, at once Jesus gave them permission. Then he and clean spirit went out and entered the swine. And they had ran violently uh, uh, down to uh, to steep place into the sea and drowned into the sea. Now see, so those who felt the swine fled and they told it in the city and in the country. The witnesses now. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw that one who had been demon possessed, who had, actually it has already become a past tense, the one who had been possessed and had the region sitting and clothed and in his right mind remember the spirit of god it is not of fear but of of power love and sound mind this one had already received the gospel had already received the spirit the bible says that they confessed that he was seated and he was in the sound mind okay uh sitting clothed in his right mind and they were afraid and those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine then they began to plead with him to depart from their region and when he got into the boat he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him but jesus said do not uh, uh he did not permit him but say to him go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has uh, uh, had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in the capolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. You see, all that the enemy didn't want is because of this one man, the man that carried nations in his spirit, in his life, you know, when, 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 when he was uh, saved, when he received freedom, liberty, when Christ came and, and he saved him and he was delivered from those demons, he went speaking the gospel in the Kabbalists and the surrounding, you know, because of one person, the enemy wanted uh, them. That's why he brought all those storms and he didn't want them to cross over. Now, child of God, whenever you have those challenges, Whatever that may be happening, remember there is a greater purpose, you know. Do not allow it to be cut short. There are nations, there are generations that are waiting for you to cross over. They are waiting for you. Do not delay the salvation, okay? 
I don't say it is becoming too difficult that people are rejecting too much you too much whenever you're bringing the gospel to them they are rejecting you they don't want to 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 to, to listen to the gospel don't uh, say that okay there are people out there waiting for you just to, they have never heard about it you know i remember last sunday we went to to do evangelism with the mama Rachel. and there are some people that it literally they told us no uh, no we don't. when we were we told them what we want and we introduce and such and we are like can we go ahead and speak to you about jesus they were like Mm-mm, not today they reject you directly and they say no and you have already told them it is the goodness you're giving them you know and we didn't even uh we didn't even lose hope because there was one even after all those people we talked to there was one man that received us with all his heart in the in that evil day that evil day in those challenges just hold on to the word of god hold on to the word of god okay hold on to the word of god the word says that watch stand fast in the faith be brave and strong Okay, because the Lord is faithful, He will establish you and guard you from the evil one. The Bible says in the book of John 16, 33, John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have many tribulations. Okay, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We are not, it is very unfair for us if God can tell you, that be cheerful, I will strengthen you, I will establish you, I am with you, I am in you, I am for you and not against you, I have overcome the world. It will be unfair for him to tell us that and he doesn't mean it, okay? So his word is to hold on to that, he has overcome the world, meaning we have already overcome. Why? Because we are in Christ Jesus, okay? So as a, as a, the last the last as I wind up, number two the the, the way that we uh, we get strength it is through the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus, knowing that we are the children of light because we have the spirit of Christ in us because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, when you have that uh, confidence, when you are uh, that truth is already established in you that you are the child of light okay you are the child of light what does that mean in every challenge when darkness comes in there is clarity of things because you have the word in you and that's why even apostles always tell us that when you have the word the spirit identifies falsehood because you already carry the light in you you carry the truth in you even when people are giving you falsehood it is already it is there in capital letters you're like i that one no why because you have allowed that truth to to dwell in you okay so you must be convinced that you are child of light and being a child of light means you have the spirit in you that is why it is very possible to be the the child of god to be a son of god but you are not enjoying your sonship your inheritance you know so you must acknowledge yes i am a child of light yes this is my family they believe in ancestral staffs they believe in curses they believe in those altars but i am a child of light i am the one to stand and tell them and, and represent light until they see it because in the middle of darkness, when light comes in, darkness disappears. And with time, because consistent, you know, one, one thing about uh, uh, believers, some believers, you know, they don't love consistency. When you give them truth, the word, maybe you preach them about uh, the forgiveness of sin, about righteousness or about anything, over and over, you're consistently speaking the gospel because there is no other gospel but that one. That consistency to some believers become boring. You know, they are like, mm, I think I have had that. You become so familiar with it and it will not bring a result, you know. But for you as a believer, where, where you are in the middle of darkness, you are in that your family and there are those things happening that they should not happen. You become that light, you know. Over and over, make sure that light, you're, you're shining that light. You're not putting it under the table. And eventually, solution will come. Do not become fearful that you are the only born again Christian. You are the only Christian. You're the only new creation in your family. And things are happening. You see them, there are things, 
some things that are happening and maybe along the way you face a certain challenge and then you start fearing and you say ah, i think this this curses they do work i think this altars surely they do work you know and you have allowed the devil the enemy to to doubt the light that is in you okay so there is clarity of things when you understand that you have light you are the light uh, of the world the, the fact that christ is in you the light you have the light you have a clarity of things you have direction you are able to know uh, 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 you know uh, to know this is uh, the way to go this is the business to put up you know this is the things to do you know you know there are those simple simple things that we may we may think that they are small but they are very very important to follow the leadings of the spirit so there is that direction you get when you understand you have the spirit in you you have the light in you we are the children of light because uh, the spirit of christ is in us and the bible says in the book of uh, john 8:12 i am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life there will not be darkness in your life when you follow uh, christ the fact that you are in christ jesus that means you have unless you walk in darkness out of ignorance you know there is no clarity of things because you have not allowed the word to give you direction you have not allowed the word to enlighten you you have not allowed the word to give you uh, that comfort and that uh, strength that you need but the fact that you are a believer you carry light in you you have light you have life the bible says eternal life is in you okay we are sons of light and sons of day. the bible says in the book of first thessalonians 5:5 five, five, you are all sons of light and sons of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness amen so know that you carry uh, you have direction in your life you have strength you have already been provided with hope hmm? and because now you have the light you have the holy spirit allow the holy spirit to show you the way that's how we obtain strength you will be able to know what to do you will be able to be strengthened in that situation okay so when you are walking in the light you are walking in the spirit you are walking in the word in the knowledge of the truth so you need to love the word that's how we escape the evil day because you have that knowledge okay you have that knowledge we don't escape the evil you know there are people that do not love they are christian yes but they are lazy too to submit to the spirit to the word of truth to those teachings of truth okay so for them they seek a prophetic word and that's why you see many people being deceived somebody is going through a lot there's so much happening and they hear a preacher somewhere who is doing some 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 things and 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 claiming that he have solution you must go there and, and plant a seed give a certain amount of something you know you get some uh, you get some handkerchief you know and they start speaking to your life prophetically so do not be that person just seek a prophetic word no the bible says that you have the light in you and if you are in Christ Jesus you follow Christ uh you walk in in light you have that light and you shall not walk in darkness okay so do not let yourself uh, to be a uh, deceived you don't want the word you know that evil day when it comes you will not have enough strength because your focus is not in the in the strength of god or in the word of god so it is by knowledge of truth it is by understanding the word understanding uh, the mind of god the meditations of god upon your life okay that you are able to to overcome that evil day so your strength is not in any world solution any motivators you know any philosophers it is only in the word of god okay we have light we see light in the word we get direction through the word our comfort is in the word and no matter what happens in your life the bible says the grace of god is very very sufficient in your life and so because um uh, i've said that the man number one don't walk in fear number two walk in the knowledge of the true word of god and i will close with this verse in the book of ephesians 6:10 i will close in this verse ephesians 6:10 ephesians 6:10 it says finally from 
Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Take up, therefore, take up the whole God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having guided your waist with truth, having put on the bracelet of righteousness, and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the filthy darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The armor of God is an embodiment of the knowledge of truth. That is now the, the my message tonight. You, we draw our strength from the word of God. We draw our strength from in the spirit, not in the world. So when you're facing challenges, just know that what will get you through that is that word of truth in the inside of you. So child of God, seek the word seek the word and love the word okay seek the word and love the word of god do not compromise it do not uh, uh, uh trade it for anything but i will leave you with this word okay it doesn't matter how far it doesn't matter how far you have gone it doesn't matter what is happening in your life it doesn't matter if you feel like you have fallen or if you have fallen short never leave uh, the presence of God, or never shut out the Holy Spirit, never, never, never be familiar with the Word of God, okay? Stay in the Word of God, stay in His presence, which is the Word of God, okay? It doesn't matter how many people join you or they leave you, stay in the Word of God. It doesn't matter how people, how many people will understand you or not, okay? You stay just in the Word of God. You might feel like it is too much, you might feel hurt, you might feel broken, or maybe you're sick, okay? But stay in the word, hold on to it, because at the end, when you cross over, there is a greater result for that purpose, for that endurance and holding uh, uh, the word of God. Because the purpose of God upon your life, it is much far greater than that weaknesses you have, than that challenges that you will face, okay? So never leave the word of God, never doubt it, never get familiar with it, even no matter how far you feel that you have fallen, always, always find your shelter in the word of God, okay? Find shelter in the word of God, have that constant acknowledgement that no matter what comes against you, nothing is above the knowledge of God in your spirit okay he's still the love of your life no matter what happens he is the greatest greatest uh, friend okay so uh, i will leave you with that god bless you so much and hope you are encouraged in the mighty name of jesus thank you